Many seem to think that Obod, the Order of Bards, Ovates and Druids, or other Druidic organisations, have teachings based on ancient traditions. They imagine some old men priests in the past, who called themselves Druids, all standing in stone circles and performing sacred ceremonies, or sitting round the fire telling stories and myths. They say how Druids, or Ovates, were midwives and healers, who knew about the different herbs and aromatherapy. Like most things we are taught about the past under patriarchy, this is all complete nonsense. There were groups similar to how modern day druids describe themselves, however, they were women, not men. I will explain who these women were later, but first, let's have a look at the origins of druidry. Druidry was founded by a man named William Stuckley, who was born on the 7th of November 1687 and died the 3rd of March 1765. He was an English antiquarian who pioneered the archaeological investigation of the prehistoric monuments of Stonehenge and Avebury. Stuckley was also one of the first biographers of Isaac Newton, of whom he was a friend. He was an Anglican clergyman. He was also a Freemason, and began to describe himself as a Druid, and incorrectly believed that the prehistoric megalithic monuments were part of the Druidic religion. However, despite this, he has been noted as being a significant figure in the early development of the modern movement known as Neo-Druidry. Stuckley's principal works, elaborate accounts of Stonehenge and Avebury, appeared in 1740 and 1743. These were supposed to be the first of the multi-volume universal history. Stuckley proposed that an ancient patriarchal religion was the original religion of mankind. This had subsequently degenerated as idol worship had emerged. Stuckley believed that the Druids and the early Christians were examples of this religion. Stuckley himself was a priest in the Church of England. Druids are the only organisation allowed to use Stonehenge Circle, yet they have absolutely no rights to it at all. The Ancient Order of Druids is a fraternal organisation, founded in London, England in 1781, that still operates to this day. It was set up based on the nonsense and assumptions of Stuckley. The Freemasonic Boys Only Group would meet at the King's Arms, which came to be called Lodge No. 1 spawned the creation of a number of other lodges of the order being founded elsewhere by new initiates, with Lodge No. 2 being inaugurated on the 21st of August 1783 and meeting at Rose Tavern along the Ratcliffe Highway, Wapping. Lodge No. 3 was soon after opened in Westminster and according to a rumour within the order, the politician Charles James Fox was initiated into the order through this lodge by Hume himself. Robot was founded in 1964 as a split from the ancient Druid order with Ross Nichols as its leader. It has made up teachings based on Freemasonry and patriarchy. How is supporting this religion moving forwards towards balance when it is based on an old boys club of sexist and misogynists? Even if they profess to worship nature and allow women to join now, it is like a slap in the face for women, and especially for the serpent families whose teachings the Freemasons have taken, perverted and used against everyone. They don't even have the true and full teachings. There are so many gaps. But so long as people are stupid enough to join them and support them and Freemasonry, not much changes. The term Wicca first achieved widespread acceptance when referring to the religion in the 1960s and 70s. Prior to that, the term witchcraft had been more widely used. Whilst being based on the Old English word Wicca, which referred solely to male sorcerers, the actual individual who coined the capitalised term Wicca is unknown, though it has been speculated that it was Charles Gardell who certainly used the term Wiccan during the 1950s. 
Application of the word Wicca has given rise to a great deal of disagreement and infighting. Gardenarian and Alexandrian Wiccan are often collectively termed British traditional Wicca, and many of their practitioners consider the term Wicca to apply only to the lineage traditions. Others do not use the word Wicca at all, instead preferring to be referred to only as witchcraft, while others believe that all modern witchcraft traditions can be considered Wiccan. Popular culture, as seen in TV programs like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, tends to use the term Wiccan and Wicca as completely synonymous with the terms witch and witchcraft, respectively. Gardenarian Wicca, or Gardenarian Witchcraft, is a tradition in the neo-pagan religion of Wicca, whose members can trace initiatory descent from Gerald Gardner. The tradition is itself named after Gardner, 1884-1964, a British civil servant and scholar of magic. The term Gardenarian was probably coined by the founder of Cochranian Witchcraft, Robert Cochrane, in the 1950s or 60s, who himself left that tradition to found his own. Gerald Gardner was born into an upper middle class family in Bundle Sands, Lancashire. He eventually settled down near the New Forest. He joined an occult group, the Rosicrucian Order Crotona Fellowship, through which he claimed he encountered the New Forest Coven, into which he was initiated in 1939 erroneously believing the coven to be a survival of the pre-Christian witch cult discussed in the works of Margaret Murray, he decided to revive the faith, supplementing the coven's rituals with ideas borrowed from Freemasonry, ceremonial magic and the writings of Aleister Crowley to form the Gardenarian tradition of Wicca. As the neo-pagan religion of Wicca developed in the latter decades of the 20th century, some of the figures who were researching its origins, such as Aidan Kelly and later Leo Rugby, came to the conclusion that the New Forest Coven had never even existed, and that it was simply a fictional invention of Gardner to provide a historical basis for his new faith. Alexandrian Wiccan is a tradition of the neo-pagan religion of Wicca, founded by Alexanders, also known as the King of Witches, who, with his wife Maxine Sanders, established the tradition in the United Kingdom in the 1960s. Alexandrian Wicca is similar in many ways to Gardarian Wicca, and receives regular mention in books on Wicca as one of the religion's most widely recognised traditions. Alexanders, the 6th of June 1926 to the 30th of April 1988, born or well Alexander Carter, was an English occultist and high priest in the pagan religion of Wicca, responsible for founding the tradition of Alexandrian Wicca during the 1960s. He was initiated into Gardarian Wicca before founding his own coven, through which he merged many aspects of ceremonial magic into Wicca. Not one of these were formed from anything other than watered-down patriarchal Freemasonry. Wiccans, who say that Aleister Crowley is evil and does black magic, should look into the origins of the tradition they pretend to follow before mouthing off at others. People who say they are not Wiccan, they follow a hereditary tradition of witchcraft, if it is genuine, are just the teachings of wise women and midwives of a village, who pass down the teachings of old wives' tales and superstitions, no magic involved at all. Again, these are all based on the teachings of Freemasonry. Ordo Templi Orientis, Order of the Temple of the East, is an international fraternal and religious organisation founded at the beginning of the 20th century. English author and occultist Alistair Crowley has become the best known member of the order. Founded by Carl Kellner, 1st of September 1851 to June the 7th 1905 was a wealthy chemist, inventor, industrialist. He was a student of Freemasonry, Rosicrucianism, and Eastern mysticism. 
During his trips to the East, Kelnick came across the Tantric teachings there and decided this must be the key to enlightenment that Freemasonry was missing. However, it posed a problem, as women were not allowed to join the brothers in Freemasonry. Due to the regulations of the established Grand Lodges, which governed regular Masonry, women could not be made Masons, and would therefore be excluded by default from membership into Order Templi Orientis. Reforming the Masonic system to allow the admission of women may have been one of the reasons that Kellner and his associates resolved to obtain control over one of the many rites of Masonry, possibly because of wishing to incorporate the practice of sex magic. Their view may have been that sex magic was the key to all of the secrets of the universe and all the symbolism ever used in secret societies and religions. So as in the Eastern traditions, which were taught to them by the serpent people, they kept the truth about Tantra secret from women and proceeded to allow women to join, then they could use them for sex magic. Their work will have been fruitless, as a woman who is not aware and trained fully to understand what the Great Rite actually is, can never perform it correctly. Philema is based purely on the teachings of Alistair Crowley, yeah you guessed it, a Freemason. As I have mentioned before, Alistair Crowley did a lot to bring some of the old teachings into the public consciousness, but he himself did not reach Kepa, and he didn't have all the pieces of the puzzle, so those who follow his teachings and go no further are not going to get very far. Harvey Spencer Lewis, November the 25th, 1883 to August the 2nd, 1939 was the founder in the USA and the first imperator of the ancient mystical order Rose Cross, Amorque, from 1915 until 1939. The ancient and mystical order Rose Cross, also known as the Rosicrucian order, Amorque, was founded in 1915 in New York to make public a supposed Rose Cross order that originated in ancient Egyptian mystery schools. Amok claims to be the unauthentic Western mystery school, the modern manifestation of the ancient order. However, in reality, it is based on Christianity, and its teachings draw upon ideas of major philosophers, particularly Pythagoras, Thales, Solon, Hermocleitus, Demotricus, and of course, as Lewis was a Freemason, Masonry too. The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, or more commonly, the Golden Dawn, was a magical order active in Great Britain during the late 19th and 20th centuries. The three founders, William Robert Woodman, William Wayne Westcott, and Samuel Little McGregor Mathers, were Freemasons. Although they allowed women to join, they were deeply patriarchal. The Philemic version is now available which is much the same as Alistair Crowley's own order, or Gentium Astrum. The Theosophical Society was originally formed in New York City, United States, in November 1875 by Helena Balitsky, Henry Steele Olcott, William Kwan Judge and others. One common theme within all these and other New Age organisations is that they refer to the Secret Chiefs, a spiritual hierarchy of Ascended Masters the Great White Brotherhood, or the Universal Brotherhood, who apparently give the leaders information and knowledge that everyone has to listen to and believe. Blatsky claimed to have been a party to revelations from hidden masters, called the Great White Brotherhood, who resided somewhere in the Himalayas. But Blatsky later admitted in letters to her sister that this was a code name for the Rosicrucian hierarchy who funded her. It is clear her work is influenced, if not sourced, in the work of Masonic demagogue General Albert Pike, the American South Sovereign Grand Commander of the Supreme Council of the 33rd Degree of Scottish Right Freemasonry, Civil War Criminal, and founding member of the Ku Klux Klan, who revealed Rosicrucian Masonic doctrine in his work Morals and Dogma, 1871 that was distributed to Sublime Prince of the Royal Secret, 
32nd degree Scottish Rite Initiates. Also, the Mormon Church, Jehovah's Witnesses and Scientology were all founded by Freemasons. The whole New Age movement is also. Just look at the roots and you find out. As I've always pointed out before now, Freemasonry is part of the Roman Catholic Church and the Jesuit Order. Being part of any of these organisations is supporting misogynists, racists, psychopaths, greed, war, slavery and other hate crimes. Would you willingly support that? I am not asking you to believe anything I have said. It is all available for you to discover yourself, if you look. In ancient times, all the tribes were matriarchal. There may have been kings and priests, but only if the queen or the priestess made him one by anointing him. It was these royals who were the spiritual leaders of the tribe, the ones who were seers, alchemists, astronomers, shamans, magicians, teachers of the exoteric and esoteric, philosophers, midwives, herbalists, peacemakers, law keepers. These were the priestesses of old, and they all came from the noble serpent families. This was long before all patriarchal religions were invented. It was long before some of the teachings were taken by eagles and turned into religions and cults by the Hindus, Buddhists, Pythagoras, Jews, Christians and more recently New Age religions and organisations like Freemasonry, Druidism, Wicca, Witchcraft, Philosophical Society, Amorque, Thelema and so many more. All religions and all paths are based on the ancient mystery school teachings of the serpent families but they are not us, and they do not hold the true teachings. The serpent families in ancient times travelled all over the world to help spread their teachings of Gnosis and Sophia. Everywhere we visited, the locals would tell stories about the time the red-headed, blue-eyed, white-skinned serpent, snake or dragon people visited and taught them things. Also building stone circles, pyramids and mounds. As part of our ceremonies and initiations, we would use mounds or caves as the belly of the Mother Earth. We would decorate them with paintings, animal skins, bones, flowers and herbs. The initiate would enter and find themselves crawling through a maze or labyrinth of tunnels. And when they emerged, they would be reborn. We would also use buildings and stone circles to map and keep track of the planet's movements. We are prehistoric. That means pre-his story. History was created by patriarchy, females completely removed, and it still continues to this day, and will continue unless more people realise that all the organisations mentioned in this video are connected and learn to see the big picture. While you allow yourself to be taken in by the game, you are one of the pawns, and you will be played, controlled, used and abused by their system. Time to move on. Time to see through the lies. It's time for the truth. Let's be the solution.